Hey everybody, welcome back. So that mess on the table there is going to turn into a really effective shortwave receiving antenna. I'm going to be building the MLA-30 Active HF Loop Antenna. Alright everybody, welcome back. So, the antenna project that we're going to build today is an awesome antenna for you folks who have a shortwave radio. We've covered a lot of shortwave radios on this channel and, and the reasons why I like them for emergency preparedness. And this is a good way to get a really decent antenna for a very nominal price, not too bad. Um, they're in the $40 to $50 range. And if you've looked up amplified HF loop antennas before, you know full well those things can be up to three, dollars $400. So for this, to come in at this price, not a bad deal. And it's extremely simple to build. This is not a project that's going to require you to be like some kind of mathematician or measure anything or anything complicated. I'll show you in the, in the video. It's really, really simple to put together. You're going to love how easy it is to do. So the benefit of this antenna is it allows you to have a kind of camouflaged, nondescript type thing outside of your house. So if you live in a, say, a deed restricted community or an HOA community, you can still listen to shortwave just as well as having a huge long wire out there, but it kind of disguises it a little bit, and it kind of, you know, keeps it out of the way a little bit. So that's what we're kind of focusing on today. More stealth shortwave monitoring, and this antenna is really good for it. So this is a kind of a preamp of sorts down here, and this is really the heart of the radio, this part here. You'll call this, so they call it a biasing T, I'll call it a preamp, whatever. Um, this allows you to pull in signals a little bit better. It is powered, by a USB plug, and we're going to be power sync powering that with a power bank. It comes with this here, your plug, and you have your connector to your radio. And originally, this antenna was purchased to be part of a project that I'm working on with an SDR radio that is a complete kit in itself. For those that don't know, SDR means software defined radio. Uh, the radio itself is going to be, I don't know, gosh, here's the power bank we'll be using today. Probably about this big with a flat screen on it. It's all going to be contained in the radio. That radio hasn't gotten here yet, but I figured, well, we'll build the antenna first so I don't make a two-hour video building the antenna and explaining the radio. You can install this on balconies, rooftops, other places where you need a compact type thing. It's recommended for shortwave and AM radio and in conditions where you have limited space, like say in an apartment. All right, if you're up on the 20th floor of an apartment building in some big city somewhere, putting a huge long wire out there is probably not going to be allowed and or easy to do. And sticking a huge antenna outside of your window isn't going to work. However, putting something like this outside your window while you're listening to shortwave and bringing it back in when you're done, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Also, because of the preamp section here, that we're talking about, this little guy here, you'll be able to get rid of a lot of the RF noise and interference, and you can find weak signals that are submerged in the noise. This antenna is also very directional, so you can rotate it however you want to find your sweet spot. If you want to sit in your backyard and put this on your table, whatever, out in your backyard somewhere, stick it in a bowl of dirt somewhere, and rotate it around, you can rotate it and get whatever signals you want. So you're really getting a lot of bang for your buck, it's really an awesome antenna for shortwave for listeners. And during some kind of emergency or disaster, shortwave radio may be the only news you get. It would have to be a pretty wide-scale disaster, but it's still interesting to listen to and be able to receive the info that you want. Also, too, if you have a shortwave radio that does sideband, you'll be able to listen to ham radio operators, maybe working some kind of disaster situation. I know I've listened a lot of times to the uh, Hurricane WatchNet on, uh, was it, 20 meters? Really interesting to listen to what's going on. I mean, I was listening to operators back when Katrina hit actually working the hurricane and the disaster after on that net, actually out in the field. So you'll be able to hear a lot of real-time information during emergencies as well. So, we got 30 dB gain across the whole spectrum. You're going from 100 kilohertz to 30 megahertz with this, right there. And this one, because it's the MLA 30 plus, you're going 0.5 to 30. I guess that's uh, the designation for it. That's pretty much all I could find in the differences with the MLA 30 and the MLA 30 Plus. It's a little bit lower. So you will be able to listen to some AM radio with this too and pull in AM stations that are a little bit further away. So the cool thing about it is it's just a set and forget type thing. You're going to build this. I'll show you how to build it. We're going to build it in a minute when I shut up finally. 
and it's a set and forget type thing. There's no dials to turn, no adjustments, no tuning. You just plug in your radio and go. So, let me explain the first thing we're going to do here. Now, you'll notice this box here. Let's get all this stuff out of the way. Should have unhooked all this stuff before I started. And get those screws out of the way. You'll notice this box here. This box here is what's going to be running to your preamp. This little guy here. And then this is going to connect to your radio. So this is the heart of the actual antenna system. And you'll notice these two little things here on the side, these wing nuts. That's where this is going to connect into. It's going to be a big round circle. You know, big round circle antenna. So what we're going to do first, the only thing that's not included in this is a piece of PVC. And you can install this on PVC, on wood, on any kind of temporary type structure, or even on a permanent type structure. I wouldn't put it on metal because you don't want this to... Uh, be in the wrong frequency ranges for what you're trying to receive, and metal may throw it off a little bit. You know, if you got an old, uh, what are they all, the, the old satellite dish type thing, somebody tried to put one of, them, one of them on there, and I saw it didn't work out as well. So what I've done here is I got myself a piece of two-inch PVC tubing. Now, I kind of threw some paint on it yesterday in preparation for this video. Now, this is kind of long. It's probably about four feet long. Um, you'll get to see the whole thing when I'm building it. But what we're going to do with this is put this down flat here, and we're going to build this antenna on this piece of plastic. That's why I don't want to use any kind of metal that might throw it off, you know, what it's tuned for. So, first thing you're going to do is connect your antenna ends here, the actual antenna itself. And this is kind of thin and flimsy. Some people have upgraded it, but quite frankly, for, for what you're using it for, you really can't beat it. I mean, it's going to work no matter what. And if you drop it and it bends, you can bend it right back into shape. These pieces here, we're going to take off that wing nut. These end pieces here are going to connect right on there like that. And then you're going to screw that down as tight as you can within realistic pressures. I don't want people breaking out torque wrenches here. <laughs> Just do it by hand. Give it a good, firm, tight kind of thing there. There you go. Okay, so we're going to do that first. I want to build the actual circle, the hoop. And then I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like putting it actually onto the um, PVC. All right, so all you really need to do, now this does kind of look like it's all jumbled up. It isn't actually. Um, what you want to do is you want to make sure you connect on one side here, run it around straight. You want this to be straight. I know it doesn't look straight here. Straight around to the other side so it's a perfect circle. You'll notice if I untangle this without dropping everything on the floor, I have a big hoop. I hope you can see that in the camera. That's one problem about the small little work area. But you see you got a hoop. This hoop is going to go around that PVC tubing. So now you need to put a notch on the top of the PVC tubing. I'm going to move this out of the way because it's kind of unruly here. Now you can do this any way you want. Um, you just want a notch thick enough to um, stick that antenna and deep enough in so that it sits in there. Another reason why you don't want to use anything conductive um, now I know I've been told that the paint is conductive because it's got metallic stuff in it. For this situation, it's just a receiving antenna. We're not worried about SWR or any damage to your radio. You're just receiving, so I'm not going to worry about that. But you're going to just kind of cut, cut a uh, cross right atop there. Two little slots. And I want them deep enough so it notches in there and holds it in good because when we get down here and we got that big loop built around here, I'm going to screw in that bottom piece. So... Let me notch the top, and I'll bring right, you back. I'm going to give you a quick done. look at this before I do final adjustments on it. Um, again, it's really hard to show you the whole thing because it's rather big. But you can kind of see where we're getting at here. There's my notch on top where I notched it to stick the antenna in. Now I am going to have to even out the circle a little bit better. But you get the idea. When we're done with this and off camera, I'm just going to screw this right in. It comes with two little screws, and you're just going to screw this into here. And then I will show you the finished product. All right, so that's what it looks like assembled. Pretty simple. Uh, it does seem like I need to move the uh, middle of it a little bit further over, but I mean, seriously, that's perfectly fine. I mean, you know, me, I'm a perfectionist. If it's not perfectly symmetrical, I'll be like, eh, i got to move that. But you don't really need to be that way. Let me give you a close-up look at this thing here. That's where I screwed in the, uh, the base of it. See? And connected the two wires. And the wires will bounce around like that. That's not a problem. And that's what I was talking about, moving it over a little... A little bit this way but all in all I mean the the shape of it's perfect so what we're gonna do is take this outside and give you a little bit of a longer view of it prop it up in something and we're gonna test it with one of my radios now the radio I wanted to test this with 
has not arrived yet. So we're going to use one of my old Yaesu VX5s that get uh, that go up in the shortwave bands. They don't do sideband, but they do AM. And we're going to test it out on the time signal on WWV out of Colorado. So let me set all that up, and I'll bring you back. All right, so I want to give you a quick look at how it's set up out here. I literally just shoved it in a pot here with a plant. And that's the whole thing. You can barely see the stainless steel um, loop here. So it definitely would blend in in an area where maybe they wouldn't take too kindly to having an antenna outside. And that should be a perfect height for it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my setup over here on a table, and we're going to try and tune in some stations. I'm going to start off with WWV. That's the time signal on uh, on uh, on shortwave, and we're going to try it out. All right, so I got a uh, battery bank here. We're going to connect the antenna that I just showed you to this box here. And these are little SMA connectors. One of the reasons I purchased this with the SMA on the end is because I've got the radio I'm getting has an SMA connector on it for its antenna jack. Now you can buy adapters to fit this into anything. And we're going to plug this in. I know it's kind of sunny out here, but hopefully you can see that green light on there. Let's see if I can cover it a little bit or shade it. So the antenna system is working. Now the first thing we're going to do is turn on our little VX5 here. And see if we can hear WWV. Very, very faint with the existing antenna. So we're going to take that antenna off and put on this amplified antenna. And I don't have it orientated, oriented or pointed in any uh, particular direction right now. We may move it depending on how well or how poor the reception is. I'll turn it on. Wow. Look at the signal strength on that. See the bars? So, it definitely works just as is. Now what I'm going to do is tune around and see if I can hear anything else on shortwave. You can definitely hear how loud that is. I'm going to tune around. Let me make sure it's in the camera. There you go. You can see the bars all the way across with that antenna. I'm going to tune around and see if I can find anything else on there interesting. All right, you see a 720 on top there. I hope you can see it. That is a local station out of Vegas that we really don't get well anymore. And you can see the signal strength on that. So it does work for AM. Let me keep tuning around here. Not sure what that is. 9855. I don't know if you can see it. But we're definitely getting in some uh, unusual shortwave signals. It would never be picked up with just that little tiny rubber ducky antenna there. So, let me finish up, wrap up, and I'll tell you where you can pick one of these up. Alright, so there you go. It's all set up. That's the antenna. As you can tell, it's really, really stealth. Um, it doesn't really scream antenna. Uh, you could definitely put that out and say a deed-restricted or HOA neighborhood in your backyard. Even if just long enough to uh, listen to what you're doing during the day and bring it back in at night. Um, you see I don't have it super high up. You can put it high up. The higher the better. But uh, you saw what that was pulling in with some of the stations that never would have come in with this little cheapy little tiny antenna here. Uh, this is great for 2 meters and 440, not so good for shortwave. So definitely a cool little thing. They run anywhere from $50 to $40 depending on where you buy them. The only link I can find on Amazon it has them at $50. Uh, again, hunt around. You don't have to buy from me. If you can find it cheaper, by all means, buy it cheaper. Um, but I definitely think it's a handy little thing to have. Especially if you're like in an apartment building or a situation where you could just stick that out your window and monitor with your shortwave during the day and bring it in at night. You're not really disturbing anybody. You don't have any kind of huge antenna. You have the nice little amplified uh, amplified system going on down here. So that's really, really cool. And uh, definitely a neat little system and very inexpensive. I mean, you know, most of these uh, magnetic loop antennas, HF loop antennas, uh, run in the, uh, you know, a couple hundred dollars. So for 50 bucks, you got yourself an antenna. I really can't complain. It brings in about 30 dB gain across the spectrum. Um, I'm able to actually hear an AM station in Vegas that I would never hear on that little tiny radio. So that was pretty impressive. Anyway, folks, that is the MLA-30 Active Loop HF antenna right there.
<laughs> as you can see. And uh, I, uh, I'm pretty pleased with it so far. So when we get that other radio that's coming in, it's going to be a really neat radio. When we get it coming in, I'm going to show it to you. And uh, we'll already have this running and set up outside so we won't have to go through that. And I'll explain to you the, uh, the radio. Anyway, folks... I will put a link down below where you can pick one of these up. Like I said, they're about 50 bucks on Amazon. Um, if you're not interested in buying it on Amazon, just click my uh, Amazon store link and shop as you normally would. Uh, we do appreciate when you do that. Don't forget to check out our Food for Patriots link down below as well. That is preparewithiridium.com. And uh, they do have food in stock ready to ship. And it's ready to get it, and uh, now's a good time to stock up on it. And don't forget to check out our Thrive Life link. I was on there this morning and noticed that they have some more of the chicken in stock again. So uh, check them out and see uh, what you can pick up. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.